and welcome to Tuesday News Day, your number one resource for the entire week's worth of VR news. The full body tracking war has begun. This week, we've got a very exciting episode and something just a little different. HTC makes a massive announcement. We've got a hands-on impression and test from Stonks, the newest cheap full body tracking setup out there, and something huge may be coming from Pico. All that and so much more, but first... Dinner's ready! Is it this video sponsor? That's right, so I love good food and I love to cook, but sometimes the whole process can take a big chunk of your day. And that's where Factor comes in, a meal delivery service that ships chef-prepared weekly meals to your doorstep. Don't have time to cook? Don't want to overspend on Uber Eats? Well, a Factor meal only takes two minutes to heat up, and the meals are surprisingly tasty, definitely beating any microwave meal I've ever had. But that's because Factor is fresh, never frozen, and prepared with clean ingredients. Just heat up and serve, and there are a ton of options. Plus, great sides like smoothies. The perfect meal for a long VR session. That's good. That's good. I like that. So head to factor75.com or click the link down below and use code thrillseeker50 to get 50% off your first factor box. Thank you so much factor for supporting this channel and VR content. Now let's just get right into the news. So before we get into the fun Pico stuff and other VR news, let's start with all the craziness that is happening in full body tracking right now. I'm sure if any of you have watched my channel for a while now, you'll know that full body tracking is without a doubt my absolute favorite addition to virtual reality. Whether for a dancing, kicking, sitting, jumping, or sleeping. Once you feel what it's like to have a full body in virtual reality, you probably won't want to go back. But as great as full body tracking can be, it's got a few really big problems. Historically, it's been prohibitively expensive and only a few apps actually utilize it. And it can be kind of a pain to set up. But this is all changing. By now, tens of thousands of people have full body tracking and hundreds of thousands want it. And because of this new demand, something insane is happening to the market. For the first time ever, we have multiple companies competing to make the best and cheapest full body tracking method out there. And the space is just really innovating quickly. The days of spending $700 on Vive trackers and base stations may be numbered. So we'll talk about HTC's huge announcement in just a moment because, well, that literally just turned everything we know about full body tracking on its head. But first, let's talk about this latest iteration of IMU trackers. Over the past few years, these have gained popularity as cheap base stationless tracking that works with any headset. And while I've already made videos on Slime and Hardtour X, turns out basically every company in this segment is working on a better and improved version of their trackers set to release later this year. Hardtour X 1.1, Hardtour Wireless, Slime, Sony's Mocappy. It's getting wild and we've never seen this many companies working on full body tracking at the same time. And of course, I'll definitely have full videos on everything that's coming out eventually. But today we're going to talk about the very first in the new wave of IMU based trackers, Stonks. And you may have actually heard of Stonks before. This is a picture of Brad and I from two years ago with their original prototype. And well, a lot has changed since then. Stonks has since moved to a six IMU array that connects to a PC with a USB dongle using their own proprietary codec and PC app to tie it all together. And I will say that this is just a pre-production unit. The Stonks team says that if they reach their Indiegogo goal, that the final unit will be entirely injection molded and have a far improved internal antenna. Something I did definitely encounter some issues with. So the setup is super simple once you have the dongle and all the trackers updated. You just throw them on, assign the tracker roles and calibrate, and once calibrated and all the drivers are installed, they'll just show up as Vive trackers within SteamVR. And you can see the tracking quality here. I mean, all things considered, no base stations, a super lightweight, and being able to wear these under a blanket. Not to mention they're relatively cheap. It's not too bad. Walking around, dancing, laying down. These trackers, for the most part, did track my general movement. I did, however, find myself constantly having to recalibrate something that I hope is fixed in the future with their supposed improved antenna. And of course, when you compare these directly against Vive trackers, there's really no contest. Vive trackers just blow this thing out of the water, but it's a pretty unfair comparison. And I think what's really interesting is pitting stonks directly against older IMU-based trackers, like the Harator X 1.0. Since they're the fairest comparison, they're almost the same price and they work the same way. And well, you can see that Harator X is performing quite a bit better, but Harator does of course have a year of 
of updates that Stonks doesn't. And they're fundamentally set up just a little bit different, requiring Ethernet cables between trackers. So really, I think Stonks is more a direct competitor to the upcoming hardware wireless, both being super tiny and completely wireless with a crazy long 20 hour battery life. All in all, I was pretty pleased with Stonks, just it's not quite as good as Hardtour X or Vive trackers, and I don't think it's quite as good as Slime either. But I am really happy to see more companies pop out cheap full body tracking, and I truly hope that they can fix some of the jitter and drift issues requiring me to recalibrate so often with the improved antenna. These are around the price of Hardtour and Slimes, which do for now track just a little bit better. So it's just tough competition, but with pretty much three or four new IMU trackers coming out this year, I really can't wait to make a full video comparing all of them, including the final stonks. It's a true full body tracking method war. But now we can move on because something else happened that legitimately has completely changed the entire game of full body tracking. This is something I've been waiting for for years now. HTC has just announced its newest full body tracker, no base stations, no weird IMU array. Instead, HTC's newest device is a full camera based inside out tracker that tracks the exact same way as a Quest 2 or the Quest Pro's controller using SLAM. With an onboard processor and two cameras per device, HTC says these can be used with SteamVR as you'd expect, just as trackers, or on any standalone VR headset, no SteamVR at all, and even completely standalone on their own for production use with no VR. And this just kind of changes the entire market to be honest. If you wanted super precise full body tracking before this, you basically needed a full base station setup in Vive trackers. It just was the best method out there, at least until you go to a full motion capture suit. And IMU based tracking is a good second choice if you don't want all that setup and cost, but it's just not as precise. And this seems to be the best of both worlds, allowing for potentially perfect sub millimeter tracking precision with any setup without base stations, even allowing for that level of precision on a standalone headset, which has definitely never existed before. So these will be available to test at GDC this week, which I'm actually on my way to right now. So next week's video should be really interesting. I'm just really excited that right now full body tracking is getting the attention it deserves and we're finally seeing some crazy innovations. This is probably the biggest announcement there's been in the world of full body tracking, at least since the first tracker was announced. And it's the birth of a completely new type of full body. And of course, I hope to see more companies doing the same. I mean, Meta, come on, where's your tracker? <laughs> but of course, we don't know the price yet. In fact, this thing doesn't even have a name. And I could imagine these are probably going to be around the same price as a Vive tracker, maybe even a little bit more expensive, but we'll have to see. I'm just excited to have it in hand soon. The release date is also pretty close around quarter three of this year, so it's all happening pretty soon. But now it's time for a me break. My time took my chance. So, uh, American Idol went metaverse, apparently. And there's just so much weird stuff that's wrong with this thing. Like, this strap. The fact that they're using alt space, which just shut down. Uh, I don't know, it's just, uh, at least it puts VR in front of more people. It's just kind of a silly integration. A little awkward, too. I'm clapping my little mini hands. And now back to the news. So lately I've been spending a lot of time with the Pico 4 in prep for a full review, and I'm gonna have a few very fun videos coming soon on it, but the Pico 4 really is in just a super interesting position. It hasn't sold quite as well as Pico thought it would, but they also haven't been selling it globally. However, rumor has it that this may just change. Pico revealed that they have some sort of big announcement coming on March 22nd, which is only about a day away. And while this announcement could be anything, you know, a new headset, maybe more news on their full body trackers, which yeah, I'm not sure if you guys knew this, but Pico is making their own full body tracking setup. But more likely, I have a feeling that the Pico 4 may just be announced to be coming to the US. This could totally not be the case. Don't get too excited for it. But this announcement is happening in the US, so I'm hopeful. And that's kind of been one of the biggest barriers regarding the Pico 4. Like I've actually been really enjoying it lately, mainly for wireless PC VR. I was honestly completely surprised by it, but it's pretty hard to even get your hands on one. So we'll have to see. But a real quick thought on that before we move on, Meta announced that they're selling the Quest 3 later this year at quite a bit more expensive than the current Quest 2, albeit with some pretty big upgrades. But I can imagine that if Pico slides in as a budget option later this year as an upgrade from the Quest 2, but not quite as expensive as the Quest 
Quest 3, they can probably grow some very legitimate market share. I don't know, it's just a thought. I know it's easy to think that the Pico 4 may just die because of the Quest 3, but if they can get that price low enough, it may be a viable alternative for some people. Eh, but of course, regarding Pico, there's still the uh, government issues with that. Pico's parent company is having a really hard time in America right now, so it'll be interesting. And I'm also curious about your guys' thoughts. If you had the choice, would you choose a meta product or a bite dance product and why? That's something I'm also really thinking about whenever I'm reviewing this thing. But moving on, a couple new VR games have just released that I want to talk about. Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Chapter 2 has just released for PC and PSVR 2, and uh, we don't get many big releases like this on PC, so if you liked the original Saints and Sinners, you're just gonna love this. It's more of what made the original good. And we've been waiting on that PC release. It's been on Quest for a while now, so today's the day. Just go check it out. And a little less known game, Guardians Frontlines has officially released recently. It's a title that I've been pretty excited about. Guardians itself has been out for a while now, but it's gone through a total revamp. This is the Frontlines version. It's pretty much StarCraft mixed with Halo, sorta. It's like a fun RTS and tower defense mixed with first-person shooter. And it's just been a blast. Yeah, so go ahead and check it out. It's just been on my radar for a while now. But now it's time for question of the week from MMKH person. How much longer do I think Meta will be supporting the Quest 2? And that's an interesting one. And I would hate to be wrong here and know that this is definitely just my opinion. I hope I'm right, but I could be very wrong. So I think the Quest 2 will be supported for another three years, counting this year. I imagine it'll be properly supported for the rest of 2023, still receive updates and games through 2024, and then probably really start losing a lot of attention and steam and updates in 2025, and maybe completely losing main support in 2026. I could be wrong on this one, but the XR2 chipset is just kind of everywhere, and there are a lot of Quest 2s out there, so I don't see it losing mainline support anytime super soon. But on the other side, if Quest 3 is really as powerful as it's rumored to be, the Quest 2 will just flat out be holding new titles back. So I think Quest 3 exclusives are inevitable, starting pretty soon. But yeah, if you have a Quest 2 right now, I think you're pretty okay, but I definitely wouldn't go out and buy one, that's for sure. And that was question of the week. Make sure to leave your own down below. I may just answer yours next. So I am currently traveling to GDC right now. Like if you're watching this, I'm probably on a plane. So expect some really fun coverage on that. I'll try and be posting everywhere. But that also means that I'm not gonna be streaming this week, but I wanted to say, I just really appreciate all the amazing support that Twitch has gotten recently. Coming back to streaming has been an absolute blast. In case you wanna check that out, I may be streaming from GDC. I'm not sure yet. Definitely join up in the Discord server. You'll get all the updates on when I'm streaming next. And plus you'll be able to join an awesome VR community. So yeah, check it out. I wanted to say thank you to all of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas. I couldn't do any of this without you. So don't forget to like this video if you loved it. Subscribe if you want more of this. And hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, you're alive.